So tomorrow is the one week anniversary of the beginning of Apple Vision Pro. In this video, I wanna go over everything that I've experienced, all my opinions on the whole range of topics involving the Apple Vision Pro. So I will put chapter markers if some of them are interesting to you, you can jump around, but I really recommend watching this whole video if you're looking to get the full Apple Vision Pro experience. And by the way, if you're new around here, my name is Michael Tobin. I have a main personal channel that focuses on filmmaking, camera, and tech, but I'm so excited about this product, I decided to make a whole dedicated channel. So let's get it built up here. Join the community if you're interested so you don't miss out on future videos. So before we jump into the headset and I show you all the different pros, cons, and experiences I've had with the Vision Pro, I wanna talk about the case. Because obviously this is the case that most people were kind of hyping up and either, you know, it's Apple's case, it's $200. And so there's a lot of debate of, is it worth it or not? Here's my opinion. It's a great case in a lot of ways, especially the inside. I was very happy with how they have everything organized. A lot of these cases can be very, very basic. They don't leave room for the things like the, the chargers and everything. So the fact that it comes with this nice little pouch, you have your microfiber cloth, which I only use on the Vision Pro. You got the uh, wall, well, uh, wall adapter, forgot the name and the cable as well. So everything can kind of just fit nicely in there. And this fits all great with the Pro. You don't have to completely take it apart. You got the little face bra thing there. And uh, well, I guess I don't want to take it apart. Also, make sure you like this video if you like that uh, product photo I had fun with this morning. And it is the softest inside of the case I have ever felt. It's a, it's a well thought out case. My one critique and it's not even about the wrinkliness. I, I'm, I'm for this kind of NASA backpack going vibe thing. Um, and I like that the top handle kind of retracts. So when you use it, it pulls out uh, and you can use it like a normal handle. But then when you're not, it kind of retracts. So it keeps it really sleek. But I do wish that it had some sort of like, I don't know, hook. Yes, I can get a big carabiner and attach this to like the side of my backpack. It's really big to have on the side of my backpack. but you know, I technically can. And you know, that's, that's is what it is. That's really my only critique. Maybe if it came in like a black or a couple different colors besides white, but just because I like it doesn't mean I'm going to say this is the case you need to buy to protect your Apple vision pro. There are always third party uh, developers or creators of these accessories that make really good stuff. And I've already seen a couple pop up out there. Um, and so, I mean, by this point, if you search Apple Vision Pro case on Amazon, I'm sure you'll get hundreds of results and I'm sure they're a fourth of the price and that's great. So my opinion is I'm never gonna say, go buy this $200 case, you absolutely need it. But if you're willing to spend the $200 and you're just wondering if it's a quality case, yes, absolutely, I'm happy with my purchase. And even though there are more inexpensive options out there, I think I'm gonna be keeping this and not just because it has an Apple logo on it. All right, case done. So now let's jump into the Apple Vision Pro and gotta take off my hat. Alrighty, so now we are inside Apple Vision Pro and I'm actually gonna just bring up my notes for this video so I don't forget them. And I'll just place them on the side here so you guys can actually see what I'm gonna be talking about in this video. So we already talked about the case. All right, so next up is comfort. So this is probably the biggest thing that I've seen people talk about, right? And it's been all over the place. Some people are like, this is extremely comfortable. Uh, some people are like, I can't wear this for more than a couple of minutes. And I've gotten messages from the whole range of the spectrum. And all I can tell you is my personal experience. And that is, I haven't even unboxed the dual loop, dual band, whatever. I've only been using the solo knit band and it has been so comfortable. I've been uh, I've worn this thing anywhere from two to six hours. And the reason if I stop at six hours is just because I don't need to be wearing it anymore. It's not from, uh, it's too much on my face. Now that's not to say like, it, it doesn't feel like nothing's on my face. It certainly feels like more than wearing my Ray-Bans or something, but it's really not that big of a deal. It's not putting a lot of pressure right here. It's not putting too much pressure right here. Yeah, I feel it on my nose a bit, but again, nothing's like painful or it hinders the experience in any way. When I did my pickup, uh, I used to work at the Apple store that I picked it up at. And I, so I was talking to some friends who were working there 
And my one friend was like, fit is everything. So many people are not complaining out of nothingness, but uh, have negative feedback because they didn't get either the right size seal. Maybe when they ordered it, it just scanned their face wrong. And so she recommended if you are not having a good fit to go into an Apple store, they have like 28 different variations of like seals and sizes and stuff. So make sure that you go in, you ask for help, you know, are you wearing the solo loop, right? Or the dual loop, you know, is it fitted properly? Are you placing it on your face at the right spot? Because while I'm sure to some people, this is just too heavy of a product and no matter what you do, it's not going to feel great. But I have a feeling a lot of people are experiencing really bad weight distribution just because of a bad fit. So a tweet I saw earlier or X, whatever, from Vadim showed something that I've seen sprinkled out across the internet sphere the past couple of days, but it was talking about go ahead and remove the uh, light seal here. And you'll actually give yourself a greater field of view because this light seal is actually what's contributing partially to the kind of black borders where it looks like I'm looking through actual ski goggles or like binoculars or something. Uh, and apparently if you have the larger light seal, it's even worse. So I have the small one, I have the 21W or something. Uh, and apparently that's the best light seal for field of view. But if you take that off, you'll get an even larger field of view. And I experienced a couple benefits from this. So if I go ahead and take this off and what he recommended doing was literally take off both the light seal and other seal magnets. I forget the names of these two individual things, but take both things off. So all you're left with is the actual, uh, the headset itself, and then go ahead and put it back on. Now, sometimes the optic ID uh, fails when I do this. So I just have to put in my password. So what I'm seeing is definitely less binocular black bar. It's, but it doesn't feel like much. And what's bothering me more is the fact that I can actually see my real peripherals so I can see outside. So if you're not in a dark environment, you're never going to feel fully immersed because you're always getting a bunch of light leaks because that's the point of the seal is to kind of seal all the light in and out. But I will say one advantage of doing this is if you are feeling the weight and the pressure of the Vision Pro on your cheeks or your forehead, uh, most of that feeling is gone. I don't feel it at all. It's not even touching my cheeks actually underneath here. So uh, that feels completely weightless. And on my forehead, it feels like it's barely touching it. So all the weight is actually on my nose. Now to me, this still doesn't hurt. I don't know if I could go six hours, definitely an hour or two probably. And I'm sure if I took it off after a long period of time, my nose would, you know, feel uh, like it, you know, was a bit sore or something but I could see someone putting a little piece of foam or I'm sure a third party accessory maker could, uh, you know, make something for it. Just realized that cable's looking kind of weird, but yeah, like this, this is an option. It still works. You do get a little pop-up that says like the sensors are too close. And at first I thought it meant that it was going to damage the screens, but when my dyslexic brain reread it, it was talking about how it, could cause an injury as if you fall, your face doesn't have any sort of padding between you and this metal and glass. So, you know, you could severely like blind yourself if you get some glass in your eyes. So I think that's what that pop-up is for, but if you hit dismiss, uh, it doesn't limit you in any way from using it. So you can totally use it like this, uh, which, hey, you know, give it a try and see what you think. But for me, this, this isn't the vibe I'm going for, so I'm going to put my seal back on. <laughs> what's funny is I glanced over here to look at the my next talking point, but then I realized that my notes are only in my uh, Vision Pro. They're not actually floating. There we go. All right, so remove light seal, done. All right, so in terms of demos, there's a couple that you need to check out for yourself, or if you have already done it, you should show your friends and family. My favorite demos by far are if you go to the Apple TV app, uh, let me go back here so you can see, and you go up to the search bar on the left panel, this third option at the top, you'll see only on Vision Pro. So here there's some experiences. These are all amazing if you have some time to dive into them. 
but I really recommend checking out this immersive uh, or experience immersive. And it's like two and a half minutes, kind of a demo highlight reel, a mix of all four of these, except for the prehistoric one, uh, as well as some clips from things outside of those. And it's just incredible. And that, that I'm so happy it was one of my first videos that kind of played at me. Um, it, it's just remarkable. So definitely watch those in Apple TV. And then in terms of dinosaurs, like I said, there is the prehistoric planet. That one's really cool. But if you want to see the true sharpness capability of these screens, Encounter Dinosaurs is the one you've probably seen videos of because it's not copyright like everything on Apple TV. I can't actually click on and show you. Encounter Dinosaurs is the one where like the screen opens up in your room and the dinosaur like walks out in front of you and you have the butterfly on your finger. That is the sharpest demo that it's so clear it's ridiculous you have to try that one and then my other favorite demo is spatial photos and videos which uh that one if you're showing it to like friends and family who have an emotional connection to spatial videos that you have uh we'll touch on that in just a few minutes but that one's a good one as well so there's plenty of stuff you could demo right and but that's kind of the honeymoon phase of these devices and so now that it's a week later, I'm not, I'm no longer really doing those demos, right? I really need to experience, uh, you know, what's the actual use case of this device. And so demos are great, but let's talk about some more uh, further things as we get deeper into the Vision Pro. So uh, lose track of time in here. This is a really small detail, but unless you get one of those clock widgets, which I recommend, the only other way to do it is if you look up at the top and you see your uh, control panel, I can see the time. But I'll tell you, especially if you're comfortable with your fit, man, two hours just blow by in here. It's so much fun. Even if you're not playing game, even if you're just working, you got a bunch of windows open around you, you just lose track of time. It's crazy. So just so you guys know, I'm on the 1.1 beta update. If you saw my video from uh, two days ago, uh, you show I showed how I was having some issues on the public release. And so even though I was a little nervous to do the beta update because uh, just so you know, in case you don't, a lot of times if you have a beta developer option on like an iPhone, if someone goes crazy haywire, you could just plug your phone into the computer, kind of downgrade or reset the phone pretty easily. Apparently, if you need to reset the OS on the Vision Pro, you need to completely take it back to the Apple Store uh, or have the $300 dev kit. And uh, yeah, that that's kind of a problem. So be careful if you have access to the developer betas. Thankfully, 1.1 actually was a really good update for me. It fixed most of the bug issues. My screen recordings were only lasting for like five seconds sometimes. Um, and that was a major bug. The personas is another thing we'll talk about in that update. But yeah, I'm very happy that I did the 1.1 update, uh, but we'll see what new features get added. All right, so let's talk about the App Store. This uh, is a, not necessarily a con, just kind of, you know, something that, you know, any day one early adopters are going to experience. The App Store, I, I know on day one, they had 600 apps ready to go and obviously over a million iPad apps that they kind of ported over. What's unfortunate is if you go here and, oh, they finally changed it a little bit. All right, so this top part is slightly different, but not much to be. Yeah, it's actually no, it's it's pretty much all the same apps. Just these three new ones are put at the top. The App Store for Discovery has been, you know, lack of a better word, boring. There's not much going on here in terms of discoverability. When you first open it up on day one, it's fun. You know, you go in, you download some of these apps that stand out to you. You can see I've grabbed a couple but there's no like that one killer app that you just have to get that just makes this amazing. All right, I see they've started to break it down into categories. That's nice if I go into productivity. Yeah, there, it's all the same stuff I've been seeing all week. And so really the place to go is you wanna search uh, Twitter, X, whatever, uh, search forums, just Google search like best Vision Pro apps, even here on YouTube. Some people have put together some good apps that they've found. But for the most part, I'm seeing the same apps kind of repeated over and over. And the fact that 
you know, a weather app or something makes it into someone's YouTube video saying most amazing apps ever for Vision Pro is kind of silly. It kind of shows you that there's not a lot of totally life-changing, incredible apps as of yet. We are starting to get some exciting announcements. I mean, heck, just Adobe uh, launched that there will be the Lightroom as well as Firefly they just put in here. So the generative AI app is in here. That one is a cool addition. I'm happy to see. Hopefully Photoshop comes. Uh, it's insane that Final Cut's not in here. Obviously, you have DaVinci Resolve, the iPad version. Um, but yeah, like exploring some of these apps, a lot of them like this one designed for iPhone and iPad, but work great on Vision Pro. Uh, these are, you know, it's cool, but the app store definitely needs to work on its discoverability because it's kind of exhausting having to like open up Safari and like search the whole internet just to find some cool apps. I'd love to be able to come in here. And I really think they should have had on this opening week, almost updated daily of like different apps or something. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So now let's talk about uh, connecting to your Mac with multiple screens. So my experience is kind of mixed, to be honest. So just watching, this is a really good YouTube video if anyone's recommended. So here's my MacBook Pro. It's great in terms of connecting. I can just click on connect and boom, I have my Mac screen right here. Um, and I haven't played with it as much on the 1.1 because I just updated to that a day or two ago. But I need to point out for anyone on the public release, comment below if you have the Vision Pro. It connects great, but my experience has been very stuttering and buggy. There have been multiple times, I've been wanting to make a ton of videos about how like, look at me editing for eight hours in DaVinci Resolve on here. And I made on my main channel editing in DaVinci Resolve and I showcased its abilities. But after I made that video, We'll see kind of if this is smoother in this video so I can at least speak to the 1.1 update, but it was rough. Like it, it would be smooth for a couple minutes and then it would just be really uh, lagging. And it's not DaVinci Resolve's fault because it's the whole interface. See, it's still doing it. Like I can move, I'm moving the mouse around and do you see how like, unusable that is for editing. Like if your mouse is like, oh, now it's smooth. Now it's perfectly smooth. And it's not like a performance issue because the processing of DaVinci Resolve is happening on your computer. So my computer obviously can, this is an M2 Max computer, can handle a DaVinci Resolve project file. That's not an issue. Uh, and so all the Vision Pro is doing is it just needs to cast the screen essentially. And so that's all the processing power it really needs. And just, it's, it's pretty laggy. Like it's not, it's not smooth enough for a long editing experience. The native app of DaVinci Resolve, if I open up the DaVinci Resolve, if I open up the DaVinci Resolve right here, smooth as butter, which is why I know it's not a Vision Pro isn't powerful enough for video editing thing. This just needs a couple more updates, I think, at least for me. This isn't everybody's experience. My friend, uh, Brandon Talbot, who I believe is uploading a video tomorrow, uh, I'll leave it linked in the description below once it goes live. Um, he sent me like a three and a half minute video of him editing in Final Cut, and it seemed very smooth, and he didn't say he's had any issues. So I don't know if it's a Final Cut thing, but if I close out DaVinci here, you can see it's still, yeah, it, it's smooth for a second and then it sputters around again and now it's super laggy. Listen, this is a Gen 1 device. You're going to have issues like this and that's why people like me get devices like this so we can, you know, say, hey, Apple, this is an issue. If enough people have that issue, they make the fixes so that the rest of the, you know, regular consumers can have those fixes and be good. So I'm not mad about it. I just want to tell you guys the experience. So what's next up? Mac audio this is another weird thing. Uh, now, please let me know in the comments below if there's a fix for this. I haven't dove super deep uh, to find one. Actually, if I just open up a YouTube video again, it's coming out of the computer speakers and there's no way for me to go in here. There's nothing in here that says Vision Pro. 
And I think what I heard from someone else's video is I can't even hook up my AirPods because you can only be like Bluetoothing to one thing at a time. So that's kind of weird. Maybe I'm wrong about the Bluetooth thing and I need to grab some Bluetooth headphones, but I do wish that it, if you were connecting that it would automatically at least play from here. And then if not any Bluetooth headphones came in, cause if I go on a plane right now, I don't want my speakers playing what I'm editing. Like I want that to be in my own experience as well. So that's kind of a weird little oversight or bug fix that needs uh, a fix. All right, so battery life, close out of this. I love, I do love how quick that is. Oh, by the way, I also learned that if, uh, you know, to get the connect button, your Mac has to be open, but if you don't want to open it, you can go under control center and just do view mirroring right there and go to your Mac from there and it can remain closed. Yeah, battery life. Uh, battery life is about what I expected. I've been going for, well, you guys can see actually now, so over 30 minutes of use and I'm at 38%. I was using it for about an hour before that. Yeah, it's right around that, you know, two and a half hours or so of, you know, pretty intensive work going on. And then you just have to plug it in. And, you know, it, that's kind of the standard that we were expecting, right? So they, they kind of set the bar. A lot of people were mad that they didn't put the USB-C uh, kind of pass-through charging on the bottom, but they were actually very smart because this goes in my pocket. And if it was on the bottom, there'd be no way for me to put it in there without like breaking this connection. So the fact that I can plug this in on top, still put the bottom in my pocket and just have both cables coming out and I just have a really long USB-C cable going into the wall there, it's fine. I will say that it accepts up to a 60 watt charger, even though it only comes with a 30 watt in the, in the bag uh, or in the box. I recommend getting a 60 watt charger and this thing charges really quick. So if I'm running low, I go sit at my desk to work and I'll plug it in. And for honestly, not too long, maybe an hour in, hour and a half, uh, then I can look up and I've got a full battery again and I can disconnect and go back to walking around or whatever. It's not in my notes, but I just thought of something else. Uh, I just wanna say someone coming from the Quest 2 I don't know if the Quest 3 does this. I'm guessing it does because it's not more of a talking point I've heard. Is my Quest 2, obviously I need to scan and kind of draw the outline for the room every time. I gotta like put my hand on the ground to show the controllers, hey, this is the ground. Kind of build and map your environment every time you wanna use it. Uh, or at least if your environment changes. The fact that this thing is just scanning the room constantly so I can just walk around, amazing. I love that. So spatial videos and photos. I love this just as much as I thought I would. If I go into my photos here and I go into spatial, I love the fact that it's kind of a quick access thing. To be honest, I swore that I'd never be the person to sit in front of my dogs or, or kids or whatever and be filming with the Vision Pro. I thought I'd be doing it on the iPhone 15 because that has a much better camera. But to be honest, it does have a better camera, but because these cameras are wider apart, you get a more immersive experience from filming on these. In addition to the benefit of you can still technically uh, interact with your environment, you have both hands free. And so that's kind of a cool experience. Anyone who has the Meta Ray-Ban glasses, uh, you know, you understand this pro. It's actually kind of a cool experience to be able to be recording what your eyes are seeing. Um, and still have both of your hands. Now, before anyone comments, oh, you're gonna grow up and your kids are gonna remember you with this big stupid thing on your face. Yeah, they may have a couple of those memories, but also understand that when you're watching these videos and you're watching me talk about, oh, look, I filmed my kids playing uh, this spatial video with this. I wore this for about two, three minutes as I was recording, and then I take it off and I go play with them all day. I'm home all day. So for 99.9% .9 of the day, they see my full face for a handful of minutes, maybe like this past week, 20 minutes max a day, they've seen me with this thing on my face. And I'm sure they think it's weird, but they're gonna grow up with this stuff and this isn't gonna be that weird. So don't come after me. Anyway, I know this isn't gonna look the same to you guys, but when I go into this immersive experience, it's 
like I almost tear up every single time I rewatch these videos and I think about myself a year from now, 15 years from now using the Apple Vision 20 or whatever. And obviously these are going to be the equivalent of like looking at VHS tapes in the 90s. But man, if this is where home movies are going, I am so, so excited. This is incredible. And this is what I was talking about before of if you are showing the Apple Vision Pro to family members who have an emotional tie to things that you would film like your kids or whatever, like when I show this to my parents, like they're also going to get that emotional feel because they truly weren't there. And you can just get an amazing experience like this. And this is nuts. This is absolutely like, I love this so much. So spatial photos and videos, I'm not going to say they exceeded my expectations, um, but they definitely lived up to them. And that is very exciting to me. I was very worried that this was going to be something that didn't, you know, pan out to be as good as I thought. And it's, it's amazing. I love spatial photos and videos and can't wait for them to get better. All right, so a big uh, contention here is pass through. So I'm going to try to keep my head still because there was a lot of complaints of uh, very shakiness, which I totally understand. There's no real, you know, <laughs> my head isn't exactly a three axis gimbal. So the pass through, you guys are seeing an even worse rendition of what I am. So keep that in mind. Uh, but I will say everything's looking pretty much 720p, maybe somewhere between 720 and 1080. Like it's not the worst 720p. It's definitely not, you know, a really nice 1080p image. It is what it is. If I look at something with more light, it's going to be better. And people have to be careful with their verbiage when they're talking about the pass through. Because when you just say, when you hear someone put on these goggles and say, oh, the quality isn't as good as I imagined, or it's not as sharp as I imagined. Make sure you understand that you are hearing or you're talking about pass through because that, I get the criticism. It does not look like real life. Hate to break it to you, but in the Apple commercials, they're not doing a screen recording. They're filming with their, you know, very expensive Airy cameras. And then a motion graphics 3D artist is putting the windows on top of that footage. That's, it's, it's not an actual use of the Vision Pro when you see those commercials, just so you know. So that being said, when I look at this notes file, or if I bring up my apps, again, you guys are seeing a lesser quality version of what I'm seeing. That is crazy sharp. When I open up uh, Safari here, if I go to like read a article or whatever, I don't know, I'll go back to YouTube, all this, Crazy crisp, so sharp, looks amazing. No, I don't want to try that free. So the windows, the experiences, the apps are all crazy 4K sharpness, looks super high quality. Uh, it's the pass through that's like, yeah, hopefully it gets better with software updates, but I'm not expecting it to get leaps and bounds better because I'm sure it's limited by the physical cameras. So. We're just going to see these being improved, just like we saw the iPhone cameras get improved every day or every day, every iPhone release. We're going to see the same thing with uh, the Vision Pro cameras in Gen 2. Personas from the public release of the software to the 1.1 update have, I would say, greatly improved or at least significantly improved. Um, I definitely noticed I did a rescan for me. This time I was wearing a hat, so there is a little bit of a variable difference, but my first one Woo, that one was bad. Now, if I go into my persona, yeah, this one looks gr way better. We have a uh, catch light under the eyes. Uh, I think my skin tones look better. It has more dynamic to it. And uh, I think the hat fixes the giant forehead. The jacket I was wearing at the time makes it look like I have huge shoulders and my neck is real thick. So yeah, it's definitely not perfect, but I think people should stop dogging on personas because this is nuts. Do you realize the teeth and the tongue are fully CGI? Because these cameras can't see into your mouth, so it can just tell when I'm sticking out my tongue, but it's not your actual, it's not an actual video rendition of your tongue. Because look, if I flip my tongue, we learned it can't do that. See, it's flipped in real life, but this keeps it straight. 
weirdest testing, but it's amazing. The fact that this is happening in real time is nuts. I don't see how anyone, like I can see people, I can understand people laughing at it because it is kind of creepy, it's kind of silly, but it's also equally incredible. So that's Personas. Stability with many apps. This one also very impressive. For me, I was having some bugs. You actually saw it in my video from two days ago before I did the 1.0 update. Uh, when I put things all around the room, it started to crash. But then when I did the 1.1 update, uh, that fixed it. And now I can have a bunch of games, windows, apps open, and I'm not really uh, seeing much of an issue there at all, which is really cool. And then lastly is what is the eye strain neck fatigue? I kind of talked about this in the beginning, but I've worn this thing for hours. Here we are just, you know, 41 minutes later. And I can tell you, like, I'm not remotely tired. Nothing hurts um, and everything feels great. But I do want to say when it comes to the fatigue and stuff, while I don't have those issues, what you're not going to be able to escape, I don't know if you can see now, but I'm sure that I have quite the uh, ring on this thing. And that is going to happen no matter what. So what I've been telling people is make sure that you remove this thing if you've been wearing it for even a little bit of an extended period of time, probably for about 10, 15 minutes before your face needs to be super presentable. If you're about to go into a meeting, on a date, anything like that, and you don't wanna walk in with a bunch of like ski goggle mask, you know, suction cup on your face, then definitely give yourself a little bit of time in between uh, doing those things. So yeah, overall, this has been one of the most fun product releases. I love it's, we've all been talking about it, but it's been so long since a new Apple product has been released where we can, as tech reviewers and tech enthusiasts can just go, I have no idea how this thing works and I'm gonna figure it out. And you're gonna find all these different Easter eggs. It's so exciting. And while I am excited at the rumors that iOS 18 is gonna be this huge update, uh, this has just been an awesome experience. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this long video. If you made it this far, oh my God, thank you so much. You get the best viewer award of the day. Um, if you hated it, please let me know in the comments below if you like it shorter or if you like these longer rants that are a little bit more raw. So that's it for now. I can't wait to show more about the Vision Pro experience. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.